Today, our champion, Ed Zernicke of Webster, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Johnny Miller of Oxford, Massachusetts on Camel Pin Bowling. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and as always, we're glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts. We're a little bit west of downtown Boston on the Worcester Turnpike, and we're here for three strings of Candleton Bowling with total pinfall determining our winner. Each bowler takes home a permanent souvenir. They are provided by the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. Each has some guaranteed prize money. We have $1,200 of it guaranteed, $700 to the winner, half of that $350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously if they tie a string, they split that at $25 a piece. There are other opportunities for our bowlers to make money. Most of you are familiar with them, but I shall remind you as the program goes along. But right now, let's not waste any more time. Let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? Okay, Johnny. Welcome to the program. Usually I'm either watching you playing golf or commenting. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> because obviously the more famous of the Johnny Millers is that guy who plays golf. Do you play golf, by the way? Uh, I've done trying it. Did, did, uh, and I can imagine if you call up for a tea time and say Johnny Miller coming. Hey, <laughs> hey, everybody come down and watch. Here comes Johnny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, this is your first appearance on the program, but you have a league average of 124, a high single of 180, a high triple of 451. So you didn't start bowling yesterday, did no, you? No, no. Long time. So, uh, you, and you are familiar with this thing that says Candleton Bowling. Yes, I am. You've Very watched familiar. it a few times. Yeah. So this, then, I presume, is um, uh, something that you maybe have thought about for a while? Oh, yeah. I've been trying for a long time. Well, to make you comfortable, we gave you the guy who has the highest single ever on the show. Yeah, program. I know. <laughs> and you, you son of a gun, you won last week, but you missed by three pins and getting the 400, huh? Just tightened up a little bit on last ball. And, no, you wouldn't. Zernikes don't tighten no. up on that. <laughs> you get up here, you do. <laughs> well, I know you had your rooting section here, your dad, your mother, and your brother, my and brother, uh, your niece, huh? My wife, my niece, niece yep. Okay. Well, that's enough to make anybody nervous. Yep. I got the bad one there right here. Well, listen, it should be a good one because you both have very nice statistics, only two pins apart so far as your uh, league average is concerned. You never know what one of these guys going to do, huh? Yeah. Good luck to both Thank of you. you. We'll get underway right after this. About to roll the first ball, Johnny Miller, Oxford, Massachusetts. Three pins standing. And he was unable to get at it as he hit a piece of wood. Three, five, and nine, and they go for a ten. That one went a little off to the left as he held it just a fraction too long before he released it. Now he has the four horsemen right side remaining. So it is a seven box. Ed Cernicke. He won his title last week by defeating Mike Sargent. 397, 364. Six and ten. That's what he's looking at. He has it, so he begins with a spear. We're on lanes two and three here at the fairway, in case you come in here to bowl yourself. Five, leaving four horsemen right side and the eight pin, which is not the easiest shot to make. He went at it, but got just part of it. 
leaving two, and so it turns out to be a nine box. Johnny Miller. Johnny was looking at four horsemen right side, plus two and five, and he has left the three and six. They're still there. out the two and eight for a half whisker left. Missed the head pin again. Now he's still at one, four, seven, ten. Eight box. <laughs> One, two, three, and ten. Now there's a no. Some wood moving in. A 10. First check on the scoreboard after four boxes in the three working on. Two bonus balls. Here's the first. He gets seven, and he leaves a triangle of three made up of the three pin, the five, and the six. Ooh, he missed the three pin. He got just the six. So the fill is eight. And it is a 10. Now he gets uh, an identical lead left side. This time he's got two, four, five, but he has some wood in between the two and four. Oh, that one. He just fired it and pulled it to the left. Pulled it to the left again and got just one of them. Those are the three pins still standing. He's got wood in back of number one. He's looking it over very carefully. Now a piece of wood on the left is rolling a little closer. And now back again. One and ten went down, but the eight pin did not. Mm -hmm. 
It's a nine. I mentioned Johnny Miller's statistics so far as average, high single, high triple, but his roll-off score I did not mention. It was a 687, and that's, of course, for five strings. Looking right now at one, three, and eight, with two pieces of wood between the one, three, and the eight. Oh, surprisingly, did not go. Made a nice 10. Nice 10. He's got uh, three on the right with wood to the right of it. And four, seven, and eight. Ooh, just missed. As you know, sometimes because uh, these programs are videotape in advance. Our mail doesn't reach us in time to get on the programs we wanted to. It's a six box for Johnny. I have a nice letter here that comes all the way from Chatsworth, Georgia. And it's from Ken and Ruth Garvey. Ed Zernike has four pins standing and they are the two, seven, eight, and ten. See what he does with that, then I'll just tell you. Oh, what a great try. He got the three on the left, threw a piece of wood over, and it almost got the ten. Anyway, uh, the Garveys say that in March of 1990, they moved to Georgia. But they lived in Woburn all of their lives, and one thing they missed, you guessed it, it was candle pin bowling down there. So a loving sister, Teresa Queen, who knows how much they like it, has been taping the shows and sending them down to Georgia, so we are watched in Chatsworth, Georgia, and appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now. Nine. Johnny Miller, our challenger today, looking at one, three, eight, nine, and wood alongside one and three. Ooh! Three pin wouldn't go. It goes now for a ten. Needs a mark to break a hundred. And he's got it. The right kind. So two bonus balls coming up. Four left uh, everything across the back plus one and three. Oh, right down in between the seven and eight. So, unfortunately, just four for the fill. Is that Jernigy going to have a strike? Nope. All but one. Dupin did not go. He's got it. Spare in the night. Seven is the fill, and he's looking at a triangle on the right. Six, nine, and ten.
Get a little bit of wood. It hasn't decided what it's going to do yet, though. As it rolls back and forth, just to the left of the six. Yes. He ignored the wood and played it straight, going just to the right of the six pin. Eight is the fill. So the first bonus money, $50, for winning the first string goes to our defending champion, Ed Zernike. Leads it off. Here's Ed Zernike. Half Worcester, right side, three and nine, punched out. And right down the same spot. That always gets a reaction from the gallery. He gets a seven. Is it? Nope, not quite. The ten pin wavered, but it's still there. He went to the left. I'm sure that he didn't do that intentionally because when he went directly at it, he made it, but the first time apparently just gripped it maybe too tightly and it didn't release when he wanted it to. Johnny Miller looking now at the five, seven, and eight. At the five and seven, but the eight didn't go. I mentioned sometimes that we get mail that we wish we had been able to put on at the time it was mailed, but uh, that's not always so. This one was an item from, I presume, the item from the Lynn item. It doesn't say on top, but it's a Xerox copy of an item from a newspaper. And it tells us about a lady who bowls every Monday at the Lucky Strike Lanes in downtown Lynn, then walks more than two miles back home. And several days a week, she walks three miles round trip from church to the Lynngate Shopping Center. And uh, let's see. Very recently, bowling at the Lucky Strike Lanes with the Sleepy Time Girls, she rolled a 307. Her average is 94, and her age is 90. How about that? And her name is Ella Blake. Almost a strike for Johnny Miller. Congratulations to you, Ella. God love you. And she watches the program a lot, too. Eleven years ago, when she was 79, she had a single string of 159. Ed Zernike comes in a little too thin and gets just four. Now his object pin becomes a two. He's got the two, four, five, seven. 
six and ten, and the five, six, and ten are still there. Nice shot. Now to lane three. Looked like a strike for a moment, but he leaves three. They are the two, four, and seven. Nope. Took out the four. Left two and seven. Now, Johnny Miller, and he'll be working on a spare. Both of these uh, bowlers today are married, and each is the father of two. Big H for Johnny Miller, and the two pins standing are the four and eight. He made it. Two in a row. more and the two pins standing are the one and three and he's got it three in a row for fifty dollars in bonus money for johnny miller making his first appearance on our show and as we pause now in the middle of the our defending champion Ed Cernicky. Two, four, five, that's the triangle. I guess it's decided to stop right about where one would be. I'm sure that probably waiting for that rolling wood may have uh, caused a little of the difficulty that Ed had in making that shot. Bowlers, of course, like to pick up the ball and fire. Now he has a triangle in the middle. This is made up of five, eight, and nine. He also has the seven pin over to the left. And there's a piece of wood which is right where number one would be if it ever does settle down. Right in the spot where the head pin would be. He got all but the nine pin. And it's a nine box, a pair of nines. So Ed so far has had seven, three tens, and two nines in the six boxes of the middle string. Johnny Miller, meanwhile, has three marks in a row. This time he went too far to the left, just four. So he's got four horsemen right side plus the two and five. Everything down except the head pin. So the bonus streak stops at 50. One, two, nine. 
It's an eight box. Ed Dernicke. He's looking at diamond left, and that's made up of the two, four, five, and eight. There's wood in back of the eight. No, it didn't go. Diamond wins again. Nine. So, Ed having a little trouble with, uh, as I said, a seven, followed by three tens, now by three nines. There's a strike. He gets his first mark in the middle string, and it is a strike. Johnny Miller making his first appearance on our show, and the difficulty he's been having is being a little too strong, having a little too much right hand, and uh, he's uh, pushing the ball over to the left. By, as he fires it. It's a nine. Boy, that was, I'm almost behind alley three. And I could uh, look at that. I thought it was going to be a strike when he... He made a spare out of it. Looked like it was going to be a perfect left pocket hit. But he did make the spare. All right, now Ed Zernike. He is working on a strike. And he almost doubled. He left the two pin. Ooh, he left it again. There it is. For a ten. Now to make the mark, he is uh, looking at one of those triangles. No wood in front, so this becomes a tricky triangle now. This is three, five, six. Will he get it? Yes, he got it. Now at 103. Nine more. One twelve. Missed the head pin, and he knocked out the two, uh, five, and eight. Still has one four seven. Johnny representing the rollaway lanes in Ware, Massachusetts. It's a ten. One oh nine. Boy, that was a nice right pocket hit coming right in on one and three, but he left two, four, seven, six, ten, no wood. Oh, nice shot to take out the, the three on the left. And he makes a 10 for a 119. So $50 in bonus money will go to Johnny Miller as he won the middle string by us. And separating our bowlers, here is the challenger making his first appearance on our show, Johnny Miller of Oxford, Massachusetts. 
Six pins down, and the four standing are the two, four, seven, and ten. Oh, did he ever take out that two, four, seven authoritatively? But the ten is still there. That's a nine. Called by Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, and uh, our crew today, of course, is Al Giglio on the electronic scoreboard and Keith Williams keeping score. Keith Williams keeping score on the big board and getting a lot of flack right now from uh, the audience because he put a 10 up there instead of a 9. That is not a fun position to be in, I'll tell you. Sitting there with everybody looking at you and... They don't have to get up there and make the mistake. They just sit here and tell him. And it is a 10 for Johnny Miller. Okay, as I said... It's uh, Al Giglio, Keith Williams. You know Ralph Stewart is our love line judge and referee. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Phil Rubin is our producer director. Here now firing. And Zernike has the four horsemen left side. Everything except the seven. Our crew today is Jeff Sullivan, Chris O'Hare, Bob Hackala, and Bob Oliver. Nine. Now Keith turned towards the gallery, bowed, and said, Is it a nine? Diamond Wright. He made it, and we all know that that is not an easy spare to make. Now Johnny Miller. And, oh, I thought he had a strike. Everything went down except the 10 that rocked a bit but stood. He makes a spare. He's got the high-low right now, the one, seven, and ten. Wood over on the right. But he missed the object pin, which was, of course, the head pin. And they're all still standing. Now he takes out two of them and makes it a nine. By the way, our high-low jackpot will be worth $200 at the conclusion, and uh, our home viewer is now worth 250. Ed Zernike, a little too full on the head pin, almost a spread eagle, he gets one extra, he leaves three on the right, three, six, ten, two on the left, two and four, no wood. That's the two pin. Still four pin standing. Now he'll go for the three, six, ten. Got them, and sent a piece of wood across, but it wasn't able to get the four. A nine. Thirteen pin lead at the moment. Once again, the same lead as he punches out and leaves two and four on the left, three, six, ten on the right. No wood. Once again, he gets just the four pin. Well, just gets one of the pins on the left. And just two. He left the goalpost, two and three. So Johnny picked up uh, a little there. Four horsemen left side, five pin and ten pin still there. One piece of wood is behind the five, but it is not facing the way he wants it. It's not facing towards the tenth. He got
got everything except the five. It's a ten box. Once again, Johnny held the ball a fraction too long. It went to the left and punched out a half worcester two and eight. Now he's going down the same direction, but he was able to catch the side of the head pin, and he knocked down everything except the six pin. It's still there, so it's an eye. I told you Johnny Miller's statistics. I have told you. I guess I didn't tell you today. I mention it most often. But Ed Zernicke, you know that he holds our all-time record for the highest single at 197. That's not the highest he's ever rolled. He had a 200 string. He has had a 465 for a triple, and his average is 126. Right now, he's hoping for a 10. He has two pins standing. Three and nine, they're still there. So it's an eight box. Now the lead down to 10. The seven pin alone with wood in front of it over on the left, on the right, six, nine, and ten in a triangle. Got two-thirds of it, but left the ten. He made, he made it a ten. He went for the seven pin that had the wood in front of it and was able to get it and also get sidewall action that threw another piece of wood over to get the 10. Johnny Miller has 1 and 10. That's what he's looking at. Four boxes to go. 11 pin lead right now for Ed Zernike with four boxes to go. As soon as he released it, he knew that he had done what he's been doing a lot of, and that is just holding it a fraction too long and having the ball go left. Nine. This time, it was a little too far right as he punched out the three and nine half worcester right. Still has two, four, five, seven, plus six and ten. No wood. Too bad. It's a, it's a five box, and that hurts when you're coming down the stretch and trailing by eleven pins. Two, four, and six. Wood to the left of the four pin and a little behind the six pin. Made it! Spear in the seventh. gets everything except the 10 pin. Time called, Ralph Stewart going down to check out some wood that appears as if at least some of it has come to this side of the Deadwood line. Now the hand for Ralph. Going after the 10 pin, and he was all over it. All right, final two boxes now. 
21 pin lead now for Red Zernike. Johnny Miller was hoping that the 10 would go down. It rocked back and forth. There were two pieces of wood around it. One of them is... Well, one piece is back there. Now two have moved away. And the 4, 7, and 8 are over on the left. What he was hoping to do was nick the end of the piece of wood, send it over to get the 10, and have the ball diverted to get the other three, but it didn't work. He missed the piece of wood and went directly onto the eight pin. Now he's got four, seven, and ten. So it is a seven box. Down to the last box. Two, seven, and ten. And three pieces of rolling wood. One is to the left of the two pin, one is to the right of it, and one to the back of it. Got everything except the 10. A 9. So it winds up as a 94. Now Ed Zernicke. He's looking at one, three, eight, and nine. No wood. Head pin only. The other three still standing. And they're still there, so it's a seven box that puts him at 90. Seven, nine, ten. A couple of pieces of wood. Right near the four. He leaves seven and ten. So he will not get a hundred. It is ninety-eight. And another $50. You don't often win a string with a 98. The only time we had uh, three marks in a row, it was by Johnny Miller. $50 to give away. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> that we will have somebody who will guess it today, simply because, shall I say, that the total pinfall, both bowlers combined, is not exactly in the area where, uh, where they usually expect it to be. <laughs> I'm getting two people smiling at me right now. <laughs> they kind of know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, as you well know, when we do get a win, then... Uh, let's see. Let's go over in here somewhere and draw one up. And uh, this card comes from Exeter, New Hampshire, Box 211, Robert... Boisvert. All right? You like that? See, you thought I was going to say Boisvert, didn't you, huh? <laughs> anyway, the total is seven thirty-five. so next week uh, we'll be up to $300. Now we have a high-low jackpot, which is now up to $200. And Zernike will get first try at it. Johnny
Stay here, Johnny, if you would, please, and uh, Ed will be up right behind you. Now, we're going to give you a permanent souvenir so you can put it on the shelf and people are going to know that you were on this program. Uh, the first one's out of the way. That was, you know, that's the yeah, toughest you one. <laughs> I know. I'm going to argue that one. Uh, and I have the feeling somehow that maybe just because it was the first time, you might have been clenching that ball a little tighter than usual. Yeah, and when you were releasing it, you were you were putting it off to the left a little bit. I wasn't releasing it at all. Well, that's all right. It's out of the way now. And you're not going to go home empty-handed. Besides that, you're going to get $350 plus $100 in bonus money. And you're a young fellow. We'll see you again, I'm sure. Okay. And Edward, what can I say? A win is a win is a win, right? I guess. <laughs> plus, you get $700 plus another $100 in bonus money, another trophy to go up. I don't know where they all fit in the family, yeah, but... I've got some shelves down. <laughs> good. We don't know who your challenge is going to be, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a good challenger for you, and you'll be here, and I'll be here, and you'll be here, too. Don Gillis saying goodbye for everybody.